So you guys drop your second album, Derelicts of Dialect. Mm-hmm. Pop Goes the Weasel was on that record. Were you guys uh, dis Vanilla Ice? Did you guys ever run into Vanilla Ice after that record came out? No. Okay. And that was essentially your, your biggest record, Pop Goes the Weasel? Yeah, 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 number two pop record, yeah. Yep, yeah. you know, you guys sample uh, Sledgehammer, mm-hmm. which was a huge hit. Yep. Then you then the group breaks up. Correct. You, you go your separate ways. Correct. Uh, Pete Nice and, uh, and uh, Daddy, Daddy Rich f- mm-hmm. uh, formed their own group. Correct. So, so you come out with your solo album, mm-hmm. and... You know, I remember buying that album, and there was a song "Back to the Grill Again," which featured this young kid named Nas. Now, I guess Nas was already on Live at the Barbecue at this point. Correct. But this was still like a very underground. You know, this guy did not have his own album yet. He was a very New York underground kind of artist. He he shows he shows up on your on your album. And was that was that the line uh, uh, pointing automatic guns at nuns? Was that that was on yours? Yes. This is Nas. Cause you know how it runs. I'm pointing automatic guns at nuns, sticking up the preacher in a church. I'm a stone crook, still a real killer that works by the phone book. Right. Few. I got a lot in shooting songs to hear. My rhymes are hotter than a prostitute with gonorrhea. Right. Stand out on that song completely. Without question, bodied all of us. Like there was yeah. no, there was no, there was bodied all of us, bodied all of us. But what people don't, again, first of all, main source Breaking Adams, top five greatest rap album of all time, period. Every song, Snake Eyes. I don't, listen, Vlad, I see you shaking your head. I don't care if you agree or not. No, For I'm, me, not I'm not shaking This is me. This is, me. I'm just talking, this is me. This is my personal opinion. Me. You yeah. can agree or disagree. Looking out the front door, when P says we fight every night, well, that's not kosher. I reminisce with bliss of when we was closer. I'm done. I'm done. He used kosher in a rhyme. I'm, I'm Jewish, and I'm like, why the fuck did not think of that? <laughs> but when Live at the Barbecue comes on, and there's this young man that no one's ever heard of that says, Street's Disciple, my rap's a trifle. I shoot slugs from my brain just like a rifle. Stampede the stage. I leave the microphone, the phone, um, leave the microphone split. Play pretty toughy while I'm on some pretty tone shit. Verbal assassin, my architect pleases. When I was 12, I went to hell for snuffing Jesus. Nasty Nas is a rebel to America. Police murderer, I'm causing hysteria. My troops roll up with a strange force. I was locked in a cage and let out by the main source. Swimming and women like lifeguard, put on a bulletproof. I strike hard, kidnap the president's wife without a plan, and hang it like the Ku Klux Klan. I melt mics till the sound waves over. Before stepping to me, you'd rather step to Jehovah. Verbal, it's, it, that rhyme. So when you know what you're talking about, thought I was a donut, you tried to glaze me. That verse was that line times twenty. Because that was the other record in 1991 where everybody, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, 91. Where everybody was like, rhyme book's gone. Whoever this kid is, he's next up. Period. Whoever he is. Fatal is merciful. Then Fatal. Then Akinelli. Like, Paul had his clit. And everybody was like, whoever those dudes are, they're next up. Period. End of conversation. But no one knew where this kid Nas was. I had met him twice between 91 and 94 because he hung out a lot with G-Rap and G-Rap was my man because G-Rap and I were trying to work on a deal for a kid that he was working on called White Boy. Um, He had an MC named White Boy that was also from Corona. Um, And I would see Nas every now and then, but, but Nas was this quiet little dude and I never connected that that was the Nas from Live at the Barbecue. Until I saw him at a club called The Vault, a.k.a. Mars, and when he got on stage, first of all, there were like 50 shorties with him on stage, and the crowd went apeshit. 
And when I tried to get over to him, I couldn't because there was just like a thousand goons around him. So yeah, so he was that dude, period. He was that dude. And I was working on my solo album and Stretch uh, Armstrong and Daddy Reef came to the studio to check me in out. I was, I was with Red Hot Love Tone and Chub Rock and they brought Percy P, they brought The Riddler, they brought Akineli and they brought Nasir. They all came to the studio. Um, and we were all chilling, hanging out. And I told Percy P and I told The Riddler and I told Ak, like, yo, if you want to jump on, jump on, like, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever, whatever. And Nas kind of just chilled. He just played the background, which was cool. Like, I wasn't, you know, wasn't stressing him, vice versa. It's like four o'clock in the morning, everybody mashes out. And Nas is still here. And I'm like, yo, you know, what's good? He's like, yo, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? I was like, yeah, of course. He's like, yo, um, Reef and Stretch offered me this deal on Big Beat. My lawyer is telling me to sign it, but I feel kind of funny about it. Would you mind taking a look at it for me? Tell me what you think. And I had already signed OC, and I had him, you know, I was, I was getting him set up because Fudge Pudge was another beast of a record. And I said, well, I can't do that because you're not signed to me. I can't legally look at any of your documents. Your lawyer loses his mind. The only way I can look at it is if you're signed to my production company. I said, however, I'll make the deal really simple so it's not like you're signed to me forever. We'll just do a temporary 60-day deal so that I can look at the deal and I can represent you, and then we'll figure it out. He's like, all right, let me think about it. I was like, cool, no worries. You know, I said, we're here tomorrow. You know, we're going to be working on this song. If you want to jump on it, great. If not, you know, all good. And uh, he gives me a pound, he leaves. I didn't expect him to come back. Uh, but sure enough, next day he comes back at like midnight. He puts like three or four blunts on the table at Chung King. Um, we start pulling. And um, at the end of the night, he's like, I, you know, send the, the contract to my lawyer. I'll sign it. And then I want you to go see, you know, stretch and reef and see what you can do about it. He goes, because I want the deal, but the deal feels fun, kind of funny, funny to me. So I sent it over to his attorney. Within 15 minutes, I get a fax back. <laughs> fax. Fax back that he signed it. So the first thing I do is I go to Russell. And Russell's with Tracy Waples at the time, and they're in, they're in his crib. And I play the demo, which is halftime, it ain't hard to tell, and I'm a villain. I play for Russ and Russ and Tracy. And Russell says, just knee jerk. Eh, he sounds like G-Rap, and G-Rap don't sell no records. I'm not interested. I was like, cool, out. <laughs> I'm not negotiating with you. you. Good, you just gave me the pass. I gave you respect because you signed me. I was loyal to you. You said, no, I'm out. I go to Stretch and I go to uh, Reef and I said, hey, I said, fellas, I said, look, your family, I'm not trying to fuck with y'all, but I, I saw the deal you offered them. It ain't, it ain't right. I said, this ain't 1988. You know, we can't offer the greatest MC of all time a deal like this. I don't want him to go anywhere. I just want you to make the deal better. Just make the deal better. And Reef and Stretch, you know, they were put in a very uncomfortable position. So they're like, come on, man, don't do this. Like, you know, the deal was already done. I was like, yeah, and I understand that. And I said, trust me, I'm not trying to hurt anybody here. I'm just telling you the deal ain't right. And you can't sign this kid. It's not right. It's just, it's not right. And again, like, you need to talk to Craig Kalman, who is the head of Big Beat. He needs to make the deal right. That's all I'm saying. So we talked for six, six hours back and forth. And they played hardball. And Reef came down and he's like, he's like, yeah, Craig said that's the deal. Take it or leave it. I was like, ping! <laughs> Out! Bye! Go across the street to Black Rock. I go see Faith Newman, who had worked on the third base stuff when she was at Def Jam. And all I said to Faith was, um, I signed Nas. And she said, I'll be right back. And she left the room, and I sat there for like two hours. She comes back, and her boss at the time is this guy, David Kahn. And she was like, you're not leaving the building until we have a deal for Nas. So I said, fine. How many points does Billy Joel have? And that was our starting point, and that's how I negotiated the deal.
They gave him uh, probably the fairest deal I've ever negotiated, ever in my career. Um, I then went to Zamba, same day. Already had this deal, which was very fair, high, high points, low risk for them because we didn't take a lot of money to, to make the album. Nice size bonus for him. Nice size, it was signing advance, so it wasn't recoupable against his album. Really high points, points, really high points. Went to Zamba, I said, I got this kid Nas. This is what the album looks like. This is what his shares are gonna be. They said, how much do you want? So I said, fine, this is what I want. And they said, well, how much of the publishing you own? I said, I don't own any of it. I just want a 5% admin fee. I'm not gonna take a publishing deal. Done. I go to Nas, I go to his mom's apartment, and I handed him two checks. I said, we're done, right? He, so he's like, you know, he moved his mom out. But the thing that people don't understand is with a production deal, and I'm not going to get too deep in the weeds, but with a production deal, just because you have a guy signed to your production deal doesn't mean that you can just sign him over to the label as you. There's a contract called an at-will agreement, which means that the artist has to agree to the at-will. Regardless if the points are amazing, it still means the at-will attaches you and then the points are assigned to you. So his attorney sat me down with my attorney and said, Nas appreciates everything you did, but we're not going to sign the at will. We want to sign directly to the label. And my lawyer starts talking. I said, don't talk. I got up. I went to Nas and I said, I wish you the best of luck. And I left. Because I knew he couldn't sign that deal at Sony. He couldn't. Because they couldn't bypass me. And what I was asking for was extremely fair. Extremely fair. Way less than Puffy got for Big. Way less than, than Dre got for Snoop. Way less than Baby got for Wayne. Way, because for me, Vlad, I couldn't be the Jew benefiting from the black man in front of me. I wasn't going to be that guy. I wasn't going to be Ahmed Erdogan and Aretha Franklin. I wasn't going to be Lior and Russell and every act that they signed. Like, I couldn't be that guy. No matter how much I could have benefited, I couldn't sleep with myself at night. So I wanted him to win. I'll be fine. I'll figure myself out. Um, and sure enough, an hour later, they were like, yeah, we'll sign. Not a problem. So he signed. Um, and, you know, the, re I, the rest is history. But, you know, what people don't realize is that Nas's first week of sales, he sold 165,000 albums April 20th. That, that week, he became a millionaire. He was already unrecouped. I mean, he was already recouped, excuse me. Became a millionaire the first week. And everything after that only made his wealth grow more and more.